So we're back. Please like and subscribe. Check out onlinemagic.co. And this is the gala show and then the rest of it of Blackpool Magic Convention Day 3. Okay, now there's going to be lots of edits in this because I can't remember it all because, again, we're doing this kind of recording it as live with edits, which makes absolutely no sense. But basically what I'm saying is I can't be bothered to do it properly. Um, I'm not saying that, but it's... Anyway, stop going on about it, Steve. Get on with it. Oh, well, thanks for that. The Gala Show started um, with... It was quite weird. Um, with the winner of the one competition. Now, the one was competition the night before that there were 30,000... There was £30,000 for the, the top prize. A lot of money, that, isn't it? I could do with that. Might actually change my life, that. So if there's anybody that's minted and doesn't mean anything, you might as well chuck it over here. So, uh, for doing absolutely nothing. So, the, the, and I think really excited about who, finding out who the winner was because I thought everybody was brilliant. I really did. And I do have a list now of all those people, so I might do that at the end of this. Maybe even I'll do that on another video. Uh, I don't know. It's going to get to a point where I don't remember what I saw. Because it was all so dazzling, that's why. The the winner the way it worked is that the video came up and all the video stuff by the way all the gala shows was spot on you know I suppose Russ had a lot to do with that but it was just really tight and, and very very kind of um, what's the word not big that's not a very exciting word to say it. extravagant no but anyway it was just it looked great but it, and it really created an atmosphere and uh, and it felt like, you know, the, the, again, that's the evolution of Blackpool when I used to sit there for three and a half hours watching gala shows that went on for m what seems like way more than three and a half days. Uh, but anyway, so the, the, it said the one, and I thought they were going to build up to it and they were going to have someone come on and say, right, you know, here's your winner. And I've, But then what I realised afterwards was, was the winner of the one came on and performed his act, which was, I'm just going to read it because I, I don't want to get it wrong, Hyunjun Kim which I've probably also mispronounced. Now, Hyunjun Kim did a beautiful manipulation act. I think he was the last one of the one. And I thought, actually thought, oh, is this just the first act and then the comp is going to go on or is it? And then after I thought, I thought no, he, he must have won it. And then then afterwards, they did all that. And I I kind of thought it was a shame. I kind of felt like I wanted a little bit of a build up and a bit of a like, it is, in the, but I suppose, that may have been more difficult for him to then perform with that. I don't know. But anyway, he won it. Beautiful manipulation act. I was going to say well-deserved, kind of. Now, he ridiculously skilled, incredibly, incredibly beautiful manipulation. We all know how difficult it is. However, I was very disappointed that he won it. Not for him. I don't want to take anything away from him, um, <clears throat> you know, because for various reasons he did deserve it. But I just saw so much creativity and so much thought going into not just a skill and it was all really skilled but the, the I, I kind of saw a lot of fresh stuff but not creativity for the sake of it you know sometimes you see something that's original but it's original not that great but you love it for that but you go yeah great idea but you know it needs to become a little bit more accessible but this it all really worked for me pretty much all of it and I remember walking out really inspired and impressed and then when you get someone winning it that's doing a pretty much a classic. With, of course, there were moments in it that were really creative and different, but it was pretty much a classic manip act. And I kind of went, right, OK. And of course, there will be certain criteria. So congratulations, brilliant. But for me, I went, oh, and nearly everybody I I said, I said, well, who, do you, who do you think is going to win? Nobody actually said that because of that reason. And again, it sounds sort of a bit cruel, but it's, yeah, I don't really know what the criteria would have been um, for that. But he was the winner, and he was great. And then we went on um, to the show proper, the show starting properly. And Brendan Rodriguez was the first act. Now, Brendan has got some wonderful close-up stuff. He, I love his pen and coin stuff. And actually, I do a lot of stuff myself. He does it way better than me. And it's very stylish. And then he does some lovely Matrix um, work on the table, which looks brilliant. I like that sort of, you know, because you've got such a massive screen. I do like that thing where someone walks down the aisle and you see them and it, you're seeing the close-up on the screen. I thought it was maybe an odd choice to start with, but um, I can see why it happened. I'm kind of split with it. I think maybe would, would it be better to start with something big, which I suppose we did with the winner of the one. Um, I'm not trying to say the name again. I'll get it wrong and, and look terrible. 
but it's it, yeah so but it's it's great you know it looks really good and what an intimidating again you know a gala show doing close up to a camera no thanks uh, i'll do you know i'll, I'll do me cups and balls thanks so everything looked brilliant and then he did the like for the matrix stuff great i do wonder whether it's wise to have so there's a thing with doing close up with uh, on a table and it, i think it works really well in jamie allen's new book you know he, he looks great looks brilliant but when the camera's looking down at a table and it's so big and you're just seeing the table you're not seeing the face of the performer and all the other stuff and, and sort of engaging in that way i do think it exposes rather a lot you know and, then, and i'm not saying technique wise and all that i think i think you know there were a couple of moments with his technique that maybe were a little bit shaky but again you know that's on the, that's not really a criticism under those conditions uh, on the table but it I just, you know, when it comes to certain things, you kind of, you haven't got that misdirection, so you're going to almost, things are going to be easier to spot. And, you know, we're magicians, so it's very hard to say that. And, but I think talking about someone that's going to be on later, sorry, I mean, it's very easy to say that, but talking about someone that's going to be on later, I think I said the same thing. It's this That wasn't a technique problem, it's just the fact that the camera is in a place that is unnatural, and makes you kind of notice things that there's no way you would look at if they were talking to you and that and they were you know you were spectator on the table um but it was strong it was great and yes a little bit flawed and at one point it kind of it kind of started falling apart a tiny bit but he kind of clawed it back and um and con again completely hats off for starting the show doing that i would have been at, in absolute turmoil in fact i would have refused to do it the max fulham now i didn't know much about max fulham i had seen one of the photos say Max Fulham's hosting the gala show, and it's you know it's the it's the thing with the vent puppets, a ventriloquist, and uh, I thought oh, another vent. There you go, be, be quite good I suppose. I quite like a vent. That was it. What I wasn't expecting was the sheer quality of not only his act, his MCing, everything about him. And when he came on, he's got this real clean cut kind of holiday camp look in a way you know everything looks good you know it looks there's nothing gnarly about him it's very shiny and very and that's not he looks great but it's kind of you feel like you're going to watch something that's very family friendly and of course that's brilliant because when other things happen you're not expecting it and it's very deliberate but straight away he acknowledged what um, Mike Cameron said the day before um, in a way that was kind of sort of digging at it a bit but not in a disrespectful way just very funny way some really funny gags about it um, and it could have been easy just to kind of be nasty about it or be kind of i don't know but it just felt it just felt well written and well thought out it was acknowledging the not, stuff that happened the night before okay let's move on and then giving us a net a, a, a just the most entertaining and i'll mention it now he did obviously them seeing but he did a big chunk in the middle and i'm not going to tell you about the gags because it was one of the most solid laughs I've had in a long time without being in a comedy club or going to see a stand-up comedian, which obviously I was doing, but in that, in that way that you go and see someone you're a fan of. He's someone that you really need to go and see. You'll see a poster and you'll see some event puppets, and you, but it's way more than that. He's taken some of those classic things, but doing them in ways that, again, really well thought out. He had such a lovely moment where he's got this big build-up with the first puppet he ever used, and then it just, bang, it just changes and that with that proper gut punch laugh that you get that you're sort of still laughing afterwards when he's gone on to the next thing because you're thinking about it and the, and then he brings it all together like the puppets on the floor and the, the the grand and it's all the voice off stage it's definitely without a doubt the best vent act i've ever seen but one of the, one of the best act of, uh, acts i've seen in a long time and without a doubt one of the best mcs i've ever seen at a magic convention i think sang soon kim um Really nice idea with shoes, very original. Yeah, he's doing colour changes and things like that with all these boxes of shoes. I liked it, didn't quite capture me. And there was, you know, it's funny, and again, it's part of the choreography and I do understand it, but you know, when people do an act, yeah, that's quite nice. And then they step out very majestically for the kind of 10 minute applause and standing ovation. It's kind of like very serious. And it's going, you've just done tricks with shoe boxes, like, you know, chill out of it. And it was, you know, it was funny and it was playful, but. At the end, he kind of walked forward as if he just, um, I don't know, as if he was, as if nothing, as if a thing. <laughs> I don't know, I can't think of a thing to say. 
Anyway, uh, and he did, I quite like the fact he walked some of a cigarette. I think he did walk or did a thing of a cigarette as well. Uh, Greg Gleason, again, very, very tight, classic, kind of funny. Does a thing with a um, card store. I haven't seen that for a long time. One of the first props I nearly bought. I, nearly, I went into Davenport's once. This is Davenport's for you, which I love, by the way. But I went into Davenport's and said, right, I've never done magic. I want a nice prop. And they just sent me a card store. I'm like, well, I'm thinking like, more like, I don't know. I saw someone put a card in the wallet at some point. And I nearly bought it, like really expensive. Um, but he did that, and then he did this lovely kind of slow motion replay of it, which I thought was really nice, actually. And then, oh gosh, I'm not going to remember names, am I a ridiculous human being? Rafu came on as a kind of callback, and that, and that was quite nice. And he's got this lovely running gag with like throw, throwing the confetti and stuff like that. Uh, so very tight, very classic, and, uh, and enjoyable stuff. Eric Chen did the act that a lot of us would have seen before, Cards visually vanishing and coming back, and it just looks absolutely amazing. It's just such a beautiful act, and and the applause, you know, it, the applause of everybody was massive actually. But that, you know, was pretty much a standing ovation for him, I think. Um, it's just a lovely idea, you know, putting this ribbon down and the, passing the cards, and, and they change colour when they pass, and sometimes visually. This is where I kind of go right. You, uh, I'm looking at this angle, and there's stuff happening. Um, Again, if I you imagine sitting somewhere at the table and they're talking to you, and there's certain things happening, you know, with laps involved. I'll say that. We could say that. No one's going to know that people know, don't they? Anyway, but because that camera's going there, it's just it's just there. You know, it's it's not. It, it, he's misdirecting away from it perfectly. That act is absolutely solid. But because that camera is where it is, I'm kind of. It's half the half the frame is taken with his hand going in certain places that you wouldn't at all acknowledge before. It didn't ruin it at all, at all. But it's an interesting. I wonder if it, it would be better sort of bringing the camera back and sort of having a, sort of the whole body in there and rather than close up on the thing. I don't know, but it's um, but it's it's such a lovely action. I don't think of I don't think I've ever seen it live. So that was that was really nice to see. Leah Kyle, uh, quick change artist. What? I mean, just so good. Uh, it, it started off looking great. Quick change, brilliant. I love love quick change artists. And then the thought, the, the sort of intricacies of the act. The, I can't imagine how long that took to put together. You can sort of see, you can sort of see it. It must have started like this, and then it just became. And there were so many moments that could have gone wrong in that thing. You just go, you. It's there were so many changes, but in different parts, and then these quick sort of changes where. Like the, the, the dressmaker's dummy would have a dress net and they'd change place, the colour would change place and it would just keep going and keep going and keep going. And it just, it was really, really impressive. I don't really know how to describe it better than that. It's a terrible description of it. You know, the complexity, the skill of it all and the, the, the cleverness and, and, I'm not saying you don't know what skill means, <laughs> but we're maintaining the entertainment value as well, which I think is not an easy thing to do. So again, another, by this time it's a Corking line. I mean, everybody's been brilliant. You know, my little, foy, my little nitpicky things. Are, you know, little, but uh, everybody's been great. So, uh, moving on, we had Lauren Piron. <laughs> you know, it's an edit there. <laughs> we had ten minutes later. Uh, previous FISM winner. Uh, it's so nice for me to see. Now, I love um, animation acts. You know, animating. Uh, this was kind of in a workshop, and he was animating the kind of cloths he was using to work with. And, you know, there was way more to it than that. And the boxes were moving and the, the it's it, when that sort of act, when that happened, when things are, you know, when well, the, the sort of haunted hank, hankies running about everywhere, you know, that sort of things happen. I love watching it anyway, you know, just without context. I think it's great because we've seen it a lot. So it took that idea and just gave it context and gave it meaning. And also you, I was looking at it going, how is it, I couldn't work out how it was done because again, Talking about the last act, that complexity that went into it, it all made sense. It was like it was like watching Fantasia or something like that. He's in a workshop and you know things are happening around him and boxes are moving and things. He's trying to catch things and he puts them in a in the box. And we've all seen that sort of thing. But by that time, it it all means something. And it's that thing of you know magic and meaning. Meaning doesn't have to be like a really emotional story or telling as he's dealing cards out or a funny story or you know talking about this and that. It, it can be just what's happening you know what is happening in this situation we've got this classic idea how can we make well a it a lot better because you know he's doing it a fism not this fism just gone b 
but how can we make it make sense and engage us emotionally? And there's so much humour in it. And the the whole thing felt like he was in a haunted space. You know, that, that, and you, you, you kind of bought into that, even if we know kind of a lot of the, the, the methodology around it. And it was, again, I think that was another standing ovation. I think people were getting sore feet by that time, um, the amount of times they'd stood up. Uh, but again, it's just, you know, there's, there's not one really weak link up to this point. And the final act with Yu Ho Jin, who, some, was it someone said it was 2012? He went, oh, that's, that's ridiculous, it can't have been 10 years ago. That made me feel so old. But anyway, maybe it wasn't then, but he very, when he, people were at Blackpool and I wasn't, I remember people telling me that they'd seen him and he'd previously won FISM. He's doing a, a card and ball manipulation act, um, which, which again, doesn't do it justice. The only thing that will do it justice is seeing it and seeing it live. Now, I saw it on video and I was like, yeah, it's great, it's beautiful. But it, when I saw him live, I understood. He's doing versions of things I'd seen before, but in a way that I hadn't seen it before. But in a way that, I had, you know, it's all, it's all kind of still the... You know, when someone does something so well, and I'm sure there are innovative methods in there. I don't know much about about that area you know I knew, I knew that you know a couple of times then they all sort of fall off fall out but it, yeah. <laughs> um but uh, it was completely completely captured by it. his everything about it every there's no i mean the economy of mu movement he looks so beautiful you know such a beautiful thing to see like a, just everything's perfect and every movement was perfect and slow and the posture and it was and someone said to me years ago they almost started crying when they said oh what I just started welling up and I was like well I'm not finding it sad I'm just there's something that just just getting me on a kind of primal level that it's just pure beauty and it you know it makes me think everybody's every again we go back to meaning that I was talking about and I think meaning is so important in certain situations but then there is a, you know, there is something about, it's like watching ballet. It's like we, you know, nothing, not everything has to be you know, a brand new wacky way of doing something. Great if it is, but it's just sometimes nice to see something that is just utterly, utterly beautiful and done in a beautiful way. And that doesn't have to mean anything. It's like, that's what's happening. It's like the ball is vanishing. It's come back. And the way that happened was, was pleasing in a way I can't really described so it, it was I was so glad I got to see him perform that because I was kind of jealous and annoyed that I didn't before when everybody's banging on about it and uh and they, here we were watching it and it was a, a perfect ending it was a really 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 strong gala show I think the strongest gala show I've ever, I've ever seen much thanks of course to to Max Fulham but also to everybody else you know everybody was strong Yes, there were the odd little thing that, that wasn't absolutely perfect, but why should it be? It's a show. It's a live show. That's what live shows are, and, you know, that's not what it's about. And it was uh, just hats off to the organisers for getting a, a stunning lineup, You know, and the, the lineup of The One as well, which, again, I'm not going to read out now, but I think that was... It, it was one of the strongest lineups I've seen in a convention before that has so many acts, you know, it's easy to get a strong lineup even if you've got three or four people on, on a small day, but it's, it was just, and actually even now I've not seen anything this kind of consistent. Uh, so that was the gala show, absolutely incredible. I will do a different video, uh, no, I will tie up actually, no, I'm not gonna do a different video on the next thing I saw because it was doesn't need it, but uh, all I will say, next I went to see Mike Hammer, and I was really intrigued because he kind of, I kind of turned me off. I kind of went mm, the night before. Um, I was really impressed with him at the way he brought it back. But I thought, what's this going to be like? Is are people going to be into it? And I sat down, and within two minutes, I was like, "Yep, yeah, we're in." It was brilliant. It was brilliant. Every moment of it was brilliant. I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed, and not once, even when he said things that were close to the bone, that were kind of, you know, purposely kind of controversial. And I don't mean that in a kind of non-politically correct way. It was fine because we're in that world at that point. You know, we know we know the joke. We get the joke. And it's, I don't mean, by the way, that we get the joke. You know, some people kind of go on oh, being ironic, and you go, "You're not being ironic. You're saying things that are really offensive to give you the excuse to say them." But I can feel that there's a kind of there's a bad intention deep down there that I, that you can't hide. But with with Mike Hammy, doesn't do that. You kind of 
I, I felt endeared to him, even when he was being really kind of cutting. And, you know, his whole thing is based around kind of insult humour. And I absolutely, I'll be in, I can pretty much assure you, I might be proved wrong, but everybody on that stage that night that he was insulting doing that were, were, had a big smile on their face. And I swear that they would probably go back and see him. I, I swear that they would probably, that definitely, that's what I should say, go back and see him because it felt that it was all again we're in that universe now when he's comparing we're not really in that universe we're doing other things and that's why I think he lost people but once you're in you're in and I thought he was a I don't like politically incorrect comedy I hate it and I didn't feel like it was that in any way um I'm really glad I went to see that because it totally I was like yeah I, if he was performing here this tonight I would go and see it I would go and, and I'd take people to go and see it and go you gotta see this guy and and uh and I just left with this huge grin on my face the the Magic was strong, the, the interaction with the audience, the jokes, everything. And, the, you know, he was pushing it still, but it, it didn't matter. And um, I'd be surprised if anybody came out of that. You know, standing ovation, I didn't really... I was looking around to see if anybody looked a bit like put out by anything, and nobody did. It was a perfect finish and a perfect late show to see. Uh, and then we all went to the Ruskin. Uh, I had too much alcohol. Um, had a late night, met loads of people, and uh, got sick for about two days afterwards. But it was it was an amazing convention. I'm going to do a separate video on the other stuff, the kind of, you know, these are the things you've got to check out, and because I, I don't have gone about it now. But um, I might do that on the next live one, but we'll see. But keep an eye out for that, and I'd love to hear your opinions as well, very importantly. So do um, put stuff in the comments below. I will be reading them and answering them. If I don't type an answer, it's usually because I'm going to answer them on one of the live shows. Anyway, so thank you so much. Uh, Russ Stevens was the person that allowed me to go for nothing and, uh, and do the filming. So thanks, Russ and, and Russ Brown and Guy and, every, you know, everybody else. That, you know, it's ridiculous to start to say Russ and, Russell and Guy because it's just everybody's working so hard to put that together. But, you know, thank you for a, just a stunning Blackpool. And you know, it wasn't long ago that I wouldn't have been saying that, no matter how good it was relatively to how it's been. It was, um, it was a really special weekend, and a lot of that was to do with the people, which I'll be talking about uh, soon. Very importantly, I forgot to mention that the gala show opened with Mac King. Forgot to say that, because I wrote down the acts, um, because it's a couple of days later, we've gone up my head. Mac King is going to be there next year, so that's very, very exciting. I love Mac King, and if you haven't seen him, it is a reason alone to go. He'll be... Um, It'll be there in 2024. That sounds weird, doesn't it? 2024. So thank you very much. Again, very long and waffly. Thanks again. Let's do more videos soon on stuff. And uh, any questions, comments, you know where to put them. And like and subscribe. And now go and check out onlinemagic.co if you got this far. Well done. Take care. See you later.